Right, hello, welcome back to another video. Don't take photos of me. <laughs> no press, thank you. Hello, oh, welcome back to another video. Um, hopefully it's going to be quite a short video. And hopefully there's not too much background noise. As the camera lady opens a coke and we have a washing machine going. Uh, welcome to my living room. Newly decorated. Um, you are right there? You are right back there? Mm -hmm. Good, right. Um, today we're talking about race chip and why you shouldn't buy one and mine slash our experience with it. Um, first off we're going to start with the good stuff of race chip. Um, delivery, that was pretty good, that was pretty quick. And customer service. And the fuel economy went up slightly. Thank you for the point there. Um, that's about it though. Unfortunately, um, yeah. So I ordered the race chip RS, which is this. I'm being told to bring it this way, up a bit, block my face. Thank you. Um, so it's not the most powerful one you can get for the Audi RS3, um, but it's it was a hundred. It was quite a lot cheaper because I also had a discount code. Um, so I ordered that. It arrived within three, maybe four days, which is. Decent, so it's from Germany, or apparently anyway. Um, first off, packaging. It's very nice. Decent packaging. Uh, if I can actually get into it. But the first thing that I want to really dive into is the instructions. So, obviously if you know what you're doing, it's okay. But my car is about three weeks old to me, so I've got no idea where everything is in the engine bay. And the instructions that they give you, if I just get to the instruction page on fitment, is a Volkswagen 2 litre diesel engine or a Mercedes V6, which is not my car. Um, it then shows you another TSI engine, and if you actually see that, which looks like a Polo, maybe? Nothing really very useful. And then again, on the last page, it just kind of shows you what sensors you're meant to be plugging in, and where. Um, one of the sensors is the manifold absolute pressure connection, which is the map sensor. It's just there, if you can see that. Don't know if you can, hopefully you can. And your other sensor plugs in around here. Um, on my engine, because it's the 2.5 litre um, Audi engine, both sockets are over here. But the instructions which come with it don't tell you that. All of the connections on my Audi RS3 use the same pressure sensor. So I think I've counted, and I think there's about at least 10 on top of the engine of what you can see, and 2 on the manifold pipe. So, if you don't know what you're doing, it's kind of difficult to install. Um, yes, they do have a helpline, um, but obviously they're not here to actually help you in person. So, it's a little bit um, difficult to actually install. As is it to get back in the box, apparently. So, let's talk about the first time that I actually managed to get out on it. So, as standard, they come on option four. You've got one, two, six options. Four is like the base one, um, and that should be the generic one for your car. I was quoted 400 horsepower for my car and 550 newton meters of torque, which is pretty good. I wanted to get to that 400 barrier, so managed to fit it after probably about an hour and a half, two hours, and um, which is quite annoying. A lot of googling of what where the map sensor is and the math sensor um, on my car, and because it's quite a rare car there's not much help online so that's always fun so yeah i managed to get it out um took it for a drive and first thing i noticed was it was very very talky which i was thinking great it's good um and then took it for a bit of a a longer drive get the car warmed up and whatnot came off of a roundabout junction barely touched the accelerator but i noticed that all the boosts sort of kicked in straight away from about 1,000 to 3,000 RPM. After that, it then just died. So I was thinking, right, this isn't the setting for my car. Um, also, because all the power was kicking in, 
at one to three thousand RPM without me even touching the video rattling that is the washing machine, do apologise. That's really bad. TV is rattling. It's only on 800 as well. 800 spin, <coughs> is that all? Bloody, mm -hmm. imagine if you turned it up. Um, everything in the kitchen would be smashed. It'd be like a rocket ship. And all the polystyrene would be all over the kitchen. It'll be walking through the dawn and leaving. <laughs> Sad enough, fed up. Anyway, um, so yes, uh, all, because all the power was coming in and I was barely touching the accelerator, um, it then caused wheel spin and traction control systems to go off. So when I got home, I turned it back on to setting three, took the other half out in it, and it seemed absolutely fine. Um, drove it for about a day, maybe, um, and it seemed okay. Power was there, it was great. I was thinking, right, what was I turning back up on section, section and turn it back up onto setting four? And this is where problems start to occur. So we were driving along, the engine was still cold. I look after all my cars, um, so the engine was probably halfway heated, barely accelerated, like you know, just up to 60, not even floored it. And all of a sudden, the car goes dudumph. That's the best way I can describe it. It's a massive judder. Um, drops from third to seventh gear, and says, "Don't go above 4,000 RPM." I'm thinking, right, okay, this is the race chip that's done this because we've only just changed it. So get to where we're going, change it back onto option zero, which is then completely off for the race chip. And then it was absolutely fine on the drive home. So put it back onto, I actually took it off for a little while, drove the car, made sure it was all okay and it was fine. Put it onto option three again, which is what it previously worked on fine. Worked again for about half a day and then it just came up with the same issue, dropped in seventh gear, big judder. And yeah, said don't go above 4,000 RPM. Went into limp home mode until I turned it off. So, unfortunately, we are sending the race chip back and I cannot recommend you getting one. Um, so I didn't realise the way the race chip actually works. Some of you might, so you can skip this part of the video. Um, but the way it works is that it essentially confuses the ECU into thinking that there's more pressure going through the system and more air going through so that it can sort of, it can put more fuel in and burn more fuel off and it ups the boost pressure. Um, what I thought it did was actually it overwrote the ECU, but it turns out it doesn't. What the ECU does is does what it normally does. The race chip will give it a essentially a false reading, but then the ECU will realise at the O2 sensors after the cat and before the cat that the pressure isn't actually right for what it's being told, so it'll then reduce them. So you've constantly got a battle between the race chip and the ECU. So if you're looking to get more power out of your car, get it properly remapped, get the ECU a bit overwritten, I don't know what they should do with a remap. Um, but that's something that I'll be looking into. Obviously it's a lot more expensive, this was £300, meant to be 350 and I think a proper map for mine's about 700 750 so it's quite a lot more, but depends how this channel goes. Um, so yes, we are we are returning it. I have spoken to Racechip about the issues and they were very nice, they said that I can send it back and they'll look into uh, fiddling around the settings for option 4. Uh, but then obviously option three happened again and the issues happened with that, so we decided just to get a refund. So the box is there, returns form is there. The, the, again, race chip against the, as a company, very good this thing. In terms of customer services, they had no problem with me sending it back or getting a refund or getting technicians to look at it, whatever. So no criticism to actual as a company, but the product unfortunately just doesn't work. And that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I thought I'd do this video because there's been loads of companies out there who have been sponsored by Racechip to install a, a chip into their car, like Car Throttle did one recently, and they obviously had a raving review. Um, but there hasn't been any real, real world tests on actual owners' cars. A close friend of mine as well, um, Richard. <laughs> Hi, if you're watching. Um, he had a Seat Ibiza Cupra. And he had exactly the same problem with his. He had his, I think he didn't even get round to installing it after a week, and on the first day he had the same problem, so he sent it back. So never fun, but hey ho, we move on, and we learn. But that's it for this video. If you do enjoy it, or if you found it interesting, hit that like button down below, and leave a comment. Any questions, let me know, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.